All right, so we had an introduction to factoring with the box method in our last video. So now we're just going to run through those steps that we had written out. First thing, we're always going to check for a GCF. And even if you write down GCF question mark, then you'll know you're looking for it. Do these three terms have anything in common, any common factors? And no, they do not. Next, what we want to notice is that our A value is a 10. So this is not one of those trinomials where it's just x squared. There's a 10 in front of the x squared. So when there's a number in front of your x squared, we can factor with the box method. So let's go ahead and draw our box. We are going to put the first term, 10x squared, into the top left box. We're going to put the last term, positive 3, in the bottom right box. And then we have to find the two, um, two terms, two factors that we're going to put into those boxes. So what we do is we take our A value times our C value. We're going to do 10 times 3. Looks like 10.3. 10 times 3, and that gives us 30. Now what we want are factors of 30 that will add up to this middle term of 17. So if you think through your factors of 30, we have 1 and 15, nope, 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3, 10, 6, 5, if you guys are listing factors and you recognize, oh, that's the one I want, 2 and 15, you don't have to list all the factors. And I encourage you to work on coming up with a factor pair in your head. You know, if you get to a point where you don't need to write the factor pairs down, that's great. Um, so we want the factor pair 2 and 15. So we're going to fill in the rest of our box. One box gets a 2x, the other box gets a 15x. Okay, now we're going to find GCFs. We're going to factor GCFs out to the left and up to the top. Um, I'm just going to go to the left first. So if I go this direction, I'm looking for a GCF of just these two terms. So look at the coefficients first, 10 and 15. What's the biggest factor for 10 and 15? And that would be a 5. Then look at the x's. We have x squared and x. The most number of x's they have in common is an x to the first power. All right, now let's find a GCF for our bottom row, factored out to the left. 2x and 3 have no common factors. So when we can't find a common factor, we use a 1. Now let's factor to the top. We're looking for just a common factor here. Look at the coefficients first, 10 and 2. Um, the biggest number that fits into a 10 and a 2 is 2. And then I do notice that both of these terms have x's. So x squared and x, what's the most number of x's they have in common? Just an x to the first power. Now we're going to factor to the top of this column. Look at the coefficients first. 15 and 3. What's the GCF for 15 and 3? And that is a 3. And I can see that they don't have any x's in common. So there will not be an X in that GCF. All right, now that we have factored out the GCFs, it's just a matter of putting our answer together. I can see one binomial will be a 2X plus 3, and the other binomial is 5X plus 1. Now, remember, when you factor, I could take this, I can multiply this out, and if I multiply this out and combine like terms, I would get back to this original answer up there. Okay, let's try another one. We have 2x squared plus x minus 21. What are we going to look for first? A GCF. Do those three terms have any common factors? And that's, nope, they do not. So we're going to draw our box next. I might draw mine a little bigger. That would felt tight on space. Well, this is not a very nice box. 
And then let's fill in our terms. We're going to put the first term, the 2x squared, in the top left box. The last term, negative 21, goes in the bottom right. Now, to fill in our two boxes here, we need to find the factors of a times c that add up to our middle term. So a times c, 2 times a negative 21 is negative 42. Factors of negative 42 that add up to our middle term. This middle term is an x, so think of it as a 1x. So factors of negative 42 that add up to 1. And if you think through your factors, we'll get to 6 and 7 as a factor pair. And if we make that 6 negative, negative 6 plus 7 adds up to a positive 1. So that's the factor pair we want, a negative 6 and a positive 7. So I'm going to put a negative 6x in one and a positive 7x in the other. Now let's do our factoring out to the left and factoring up to the top. All right, so first I have this row, coefficients first, 2 and 7. No common factors between a 2 and a 7, but I do notice we have x squared and x. So I can factor an x out to the left. That's the most that they have in common. Now this next row, do you notice that both of these coefficients are negative? When that happens, that means that your GCF is going to be negative. Now let's focus on 6 and 21. So what's the biggest factor of 6 and a 21? That's going to be a 3. Do these two terms have any x's in common? They don't, so just a 3 is our factor right there. Now let's factor to the top. Coefficients first. So here we have um, a positive 2 and a negative 6. Again, only make your GCF negative if these are both negative. So since they're not, we'll have a positive GCF. Um, 2 and 6 was the greatest common factor of 2 and 6. That's just a 2. And then I can see that we have some x's in common. How many x's do we have in common? Just an x to the first power. Now let's look at our other column over here. We're going to factor to the top. Coefficients first. They are, if they were both negative, I would have a negative GCF up here, but we have a positive and a negative, so we'll just have a positive GCF. So 7 and 21. The greatest common factor between 7 and 21 is a 7. Do both terms have an x? They don't, so just a 7. Now we can put our binomial factors together. One of them will be a 2x and plus 7, because that was a positive 7, and then an x minus 3.